today. Amen. For his many blessings. And yes, the Lord was with us yesterday. Amen. Anytime that, you know, you get up to minister, you, you want the leading of the Holy Spirit and you want to be led because, you know, a lot of people think they don't realize really the, the service that you have for that loved one. It is to remember them, but it's also for everyone that's there. Right. It's for those that come and that they, they're the ones still living. They're the ones that still need to hear the Word of God. So I am very, very thankful and I appreciate that, Jerry, what you, what you express because I want you to know, amen. I, I, I don't know if I mentioned it, I can't remember, but I felt, I truly believe this, that you're just like family. And I feel that way about anyone that comes in here. I, I just feel like, well, we are the family of God. But I, I truly believe, you know, that's the kind of heart that God wants to give us Amen. for everybody. Amen? Amen. And that we should have for one another. That's the kind of attitude that we need to have, a love. And only God can give us that kind of love. Only God can give us His Spirit and His love and show us, you know, the direction in which we should go into. And I know without a shadow and without a doubt that that's what uh, God's business is all about. Touching lives, touching hearts, those that are hurting, those that are in need, those that are struggling. You know, we're all going through this thing together and we need each other, you know, to encouragement. We need to, to share the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's what the gospel is all about. So I am thankful for that. And I'm thankful that each time, you know, when I truly express to you, uh, what, a, what a challenge, or should I say, um, where I had to let go, you know, that always talks about when, you know, you step out on the waters or you step out into places that you know nothing about. Well, I felt that way when God came down on me when I began to preach the Word of God behind this pulpit. I didn't know what I was doing, but God in His power and His Spirit came down on me. And, you know, I had to walk that thing out in faith. And that's just with me and you too. We, you know, just like I got to walk this thing out in faith, you got to walk this thing out in Amen. faith. You got to put your trust in the Lord. And I have, can truly say here tonight, He's never left me. Amen. He's never left me. He's always faithful. Amen. And I, I do want to give God all the glory and all the praise. And I just say, Lord, you know, and I truly believe that should be all of our prayer. Help us where we need help, you know. Help us to be more of, you know, the, what we can be, you know, where we're lacking. God, increase our faith and increase our abilities that we can do all that we can do for the kingdom of God. Whether it's small, whether it's big, what did Jesus say in the scriptures? He says, what you do in the little things, God will bless you and give you in the big things. Amen. He will, he will bless you and pour out his spirit upon you so know that hallelujah god's got all the work for all of us to do and we're just going to keep on uh pushing for the lord jesus christ amen turn to proverbs proverbs chapter 11 i do want to say it's good to see chris and uh and scott here today amen i'm glad they had a good time Praise the Lord. I'm glad they're back safe. Amen. Yes. It's good to see Ron here tonight, our neighbor. Amen. He's out there working hard today. I'm like, man, give me that kind of energy. <laughs> He's out there doing all kinds of things. Praise the Lord. But 
It's just good to have good people of God. Amen. And, you know, that we can reach out and receive of the Lord. And really just, oh, what a wonderful, all of our services. But I want you to know Wednesday nights are no, no different. God comes in here. Last Wednesday, I just felt the power of the Spirit. I was so encouraged. And I want you to know it will encourage you and help you through your week. Amen. So, you know, don't give up on that. And I, I want to send that out to everyone, you know. Don't give up, but keep on coming and receive another Lord. He will bless you. Proverbs chapter 11, and I'm just going to read two verses here. Verse 18 and 19 in chapter 11. It says, The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. I thank God, hallelujah, for God's Holy Spirit and His righteousness. Amen. Because really there's nothing in the righteousness that we do. But it's His righteousness. Hallelujah. That we can sow that good work. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You. And we praise You, Jesus, for Your Spirit here tonight. We invite You to come in and have Your way. Lord, though we're few, we know, God, that we have enough. Lord, that You can come. Come in and have your perfect way. Hallelujah. And Lord, I pray these next few moments, Lord, that you will come down and speak your word, Lord, in our lives. Lord, I pray, God, that your spirit, Lord, will come down and show us, Lord, where we can uh, grow deeper into the word of God, Lord, and find, Lord, your power, Lord, and your strength, Lord, and to be all that we can be until you come. Lord, I give you thanks. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I know there's a lot going on in our world today. And as, as really as the scripture says, we really should not be surprised when we see all these things coming into our world. Because we know that uh, the Bible tells us that things are going to become more and more wicked. But I am thankful today that the church and the body of Jesus Christ can continue to go forth. Amen. And, and I thank God, you know, as we were there in the funeral home yesterday and all the people that came through. And I thought, you know, yes, there was plenty of people that, that were able to hear the gospel and thank God for that. But we can see that the voice of the enemy is strong. We can see that there are things going on in our land and the only way that it's going to be brought down is when the righteous stand at attention. Amen. When the righteous see their duty. Amen. We can see that the, as it says here in the scriptures, the wicked worketh a deceitful work. There's one thing that the enemy is always working. The, the enemy is always going to try to bring you down. The enemy is always going to try to come against you. And especially when you are trying to go in the right direction. Amen. I should get a big amen tonight. Because we all know as it says in the word of God. That the devil roars like a roaring lion. Seeing who he may devour. He is after our soul. And we can see that the enemy uses those. There are those at work that want to try to break down the body of Christ uh, to take away the gospel, to take away the truth. Amen. There's one thing that we need in our land and we need mighty men and women of God to take a stand and say, Lord, I'm going to serve you no matter what the cost. Lord, there's times, yes, we can get discouraged. There are things that's going to come up in our life from day to day that's going to make us feel like giving up. That's going to make us, you know, say, well, what in the world am I doing this for? And especially, you know, when we see things happening, you know, in our land, happening in our country, I want you to know all the more it should make us strong. And we should say we're not going to live.
listen to the lie of the devil. We're not going to walk in the way of the deceitful. I want you to know there is a deceitful spirit and it talks about that in the scriptures that there will be a strong delusion that will come upon those. And Lord, I say, uh, let my mind be equipped with the word of God that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and that I will stay strong to the very end. Hallelujah. We know that there's all kinds of words going forth. And I can truly say if there's one thing that the wicked work is a deceitful work. What, what is deceit? It's dishonest. It's lies. I want you to know the first thing it says that he's the devil. He's the father of all lies. He wants to come and bring that deceitful work into our lives. You know, I was saying that the other day we were we saw something on the news and then later found out well it wasn't true. And we're like, well, what can you believe anymore? What can you believe? Well, I want you to know what you can believe. You can believe this mighty word of God. This word of God is God's holy word, and it is true. Hallelujah. And it has uh, stood the test of time. And I want you to know every line, every word is going to come to pass. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that we might not be able to trust the news. We might not be able to trust what our brother, you know, what those are saying out there in the world. But I want you to know you can put your trust in God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. It talks about that in Psalms 36. It says that the words of, of, of the, his mouth are iniquity. The wicked. This is talking about the wicked. And it says, the mouth are iniquity and deceit, and he had lift off to the be wise and to be good. That means that he left it. Oh, he said, I'm, I'm done with it. I'm not going to go that way anymore. I say, Lord, uh, help me to have an overcoming spirit that nothing will stand in my way, that I'll never, ever forsake this gospel of truth, uh, but I will hold on to it uh, as every, every breath in my body, the very air that I breathe. And as Sister Shirley took her last breath, uh, I want to say, Lord, Lord, I want to be that way. I want to hold on. And when my day comes that, that I take my very last breath, I want to be found in you. Yes. I want to be found in you. I want to be found with the power of God and the words of, of this mighty word of God. I know there's all kinds of voices out there. And, and it's amazing today, you know, how... We look for advice of others. And I'll even truly strongly suggest to you that you need a Bible-believing church. You need a church that preaches the Word of God because there's a lot out there that isn't uh, lined up with this Word. That's why you, first of all, need to read it every day. You need to spend time in the Word of God and know this Word for yourself. Because there, it talks about that in the Bible that there's going to be deceivers. Uh, that there's going to be a false doctrine that's going to try to come in and take away the truth. That's why we need to be equipped uh, and we don't just listen to every person and what they believe. That's what surprises me today. You know, someone asks for advice or they'll, they'll talk about it, but then they don't back it up with God's Word. It's their philosophy. It's what they believe. I want you to know you can believe a lot of things, but you better make sure that it back this word and it's backed up by the word of God. Amen. Proverbs 12, 5 says that the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked one deceit. 
I remember E.B. Hill, you know, he, he preached and he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he talked about that they didn't go to lay down on the, you know, the bed of the psychologist. And I'm not getting down on doctors. I'm just telling you what he said. He, they didn't have those avenues to go down. They didn't have, you know, those ways. They said they had to go to church and they had to get in the altars and they had to pray their way out. Uh, they had to seek the Lord. I want you to know where you'll find help. Uh, you'll find your help uh, from the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and His mighty Word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God every day for the mighty Word of God. It's what this will sustain you when it seems like all that you're hearing, all the voices, all the lies of the enemy. I want you to know it can be overwhelming. We can be like David when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When you're overwhelmed with uh, your troubles, when you're overwhelmed with family problems, uh, when you're overwhelmed at the workplace, I want you to know, go to the rock. Hallelujah. He will lift you up. Uh, he will give you the truth that you need. Uh, he will give you the joy and the power to overcome. Yes. That's what we need in the world today. But we can see that those things are slowly, I, I don't even know if I should say slowly anymore because I can see how time it just seems quickly things are changing here. I would even say just since I started a, a pastoring here at the church, I can see a, such a decline. And I say, Lord, I don't want to go in the way of the deceitful way. I don't want to just listen to my own thoughts or just go by how I feel. No, I know that I can't do that because I've got to walk this thing out by faith. Amen. I've got to put my trust in the Lord. And I can truly say we are living in the day, you know, and what a, what more uh, right of a scripture go there well you don't have to go I'm going to go there to Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 talks about it says woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter and I want you to know in 2020 we are right here in this scripture we can see this thing laid out and, and it just seems like more and more we're seeing things that we're like, you know, it's blowing my mind. I'm like, Lord, I'm seeing your scripture being fulfilled right before my eyes. Really, it's a wake-up call to us. It's a wake-up call to the church uh, that we would see the wicked, uh, the ones that are being deceived. Uh, oh, God, help us tonight uh, that will walk uh, in your way, uh, that will put our trust in you, uh, that we won't listen to the lie of the enemy. Amen. I don't want to listen Amen. to the lie of the enemy. I want to have the fruit and the power of the Holy Spirit working every day in my life. And I truly want it in your life. That's why I preach this thing. That's why I share the love of Jesus Christ to you. Why? Because Jesus loves you and He died for you and He wants you to be found in Him. He wants you to have the victory. But we can see that there is evil coming down in this land. And there's those that are being deceived. I, I pray, God, Lord, I, I, if there's anything, remove it uh, and let me see the way you see things. And even when we think we got it right, sometimes we need that nudge of the Holy Spirit to show us the way. And I believe, hallelujah, if we're faithful to seek Him and believe upon Him, He's going to show us the way. He's going to show us in which way to go. He's going to tell us when, you know, which way to go or when we're to stop and, you know, not to say anything at all. 
You know, talks about that. James talks about that. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Lord, let me know when to say something and let me know when not, when not to talk. And Lord, I'm just going to give it to You. I'm just going to trust in You. And I know that You will show me the way. Hallelujah. Yeah. Verse, 9, or verse 18 says, The wicked worketh a deceitful work. It says, But to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Hallelujah. When we sow unto righteousness, I want you to know God wants His church. Hallelujah. He wants the people of God that He has called out of darkness into His marvelous light. Aren't you thankful tonight, hallelujah, that you've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? I want you to know, I know that my name is written down. Hallelujah. I know that my sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. And now I want to walk this thing out. I, I want to sow those seeds of righteousness. I, I want to do a little planting. Hallelujah. I want to know how many knows the farmer when he lays those seeds in the ground. He doesn't know if they're all going to come forth. Uh, but he's going to lay the seed anyway. Uh, we've got to keep on preaching. Uh, we've got to keep on singing. Uh, we've got to keep on sharing the word of God. And we've got to keep on sowing uh, those seeds of righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's one thing I know. God will pour out His blessing upon those that sow those seeds of righteousness. Amen. He'll bless you. Hallelujah. As it says in 1 John 2.29, it says those that do righteousness, they are born of Him. Thank God. Hallelujah. I want that to be evident in my life today. I don't want just the words to come forth out of my life, but I want there to be actions. I want others to see, not just to see it, but that they'll receive it and be changed by the power of God. Yes. Because that's what it's all about. It's about letting lives be touched. I want you to know, you never know just what one little word of encouragement could do for someone. What one little prayer can do to touch someone and help them through their day. I want you to know, it breaks down the strongholds of the enemy. And we can see that the enemy is coming on strong. He's coming on strong. And I want you to know, we need the power of God and we need the righteousness of God. No, not our righteousness, but hallelujah, the righteousness of God in our lives. Praise the Lord. I know that there's nothing good in me and there's nothing good in you. Hallelujah. It's His righteousness that we can uh, lift up our hands and praise Him. Uh, it's His righteousness that we can go out and we can tell someone of the good things God has done for us. And I say all the more in, in the world that we're living in, that's what we need in our land today. That's what will break all this mess up in our world today. When we are sowing righteousness, when we are sowing the love and the power and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's what needs to be alive in our heart today. And that's what I want this church. I want the body of Christ that we would have a desire for more and more of that in our lives. Amen. Because there's one thing, you can't get enough of it. You know, I was thankful yesterday for all the ladies or men because I know now, you know, they all cook. But I, I was very thankful for the, you know, everyone that took part in, in whether they served, whatever they did you know, for Brother Jerry and his family. I want you to know that is sowing seeds of righteousness. Yes. 
When you take and you say, I'm going to give all that I have as it talks about just giving, Jesus said about just giving a cup of cold water to his disciples. I want you to know you're not going to lose your reward. You will be blessed. Hallelujah. When you sow those seeds of righteousness, when you give into the kingdom of God, Paul talked about that in 2 Corinthians. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 6, starting at verse 6. And I know this is talking about financially, but I, won't, I don't want you just to, to look at it with money. I want you to look at it as part of your life. I want you to think of that your time, your effort, your work. Hallelujah. Because what is sowing? Sowing is work. Sowing is getting down and getting, you know, get, getting your, your hands dirty and saying, Lord, I'm going to do your work. It says in verse 6, it says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. So there's one thing that we've got to see when we give our time, when we give our things to the, to the things of God, when we give our effort and our work, I want you to know, give it with everything that's within you. And I say, Lord, all the more I want to do the work of Jesus Christ because I know when I give my all, you're going to bless me. You're going to pour out your spirit upon me. And the same way that I give hallelujah it's going to come back hallelujah press down shaking together and running over hallelujah yes. it's very important in our lives today and in the church that we are, we have to remember that we are Jesus' hands and feet we are the ones, hallelujah, that are taking this gospel. If we don't do it, no one's going to do it. That's why we got, we've got to be called to reach out into, the, as it says, in the highways and the byways and to tell them to come in. And I'll say even in the little side streets too. <laughs> Allowing the Holy Spirit uh, and receiving that word, hallelujah, that reward because I want you to know when you give uh, an abundance uh, uh, of your time and your effort and your finances uh, to the kingdom of God and you sow seeds of righteousness, uh, you're going to be blessed, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will pour out His Spirit upon you and He will bless you and He will not forget you. Hallelujah. We all know those that can forget. I don't know if they forgot or not tonight, but a hallelujah. I'm thankful God never forgets. Hallelujah. He doesn't forget you. He sees you in your time. He sees what you're going through. And I want you to know He sees when you sow seeds of righteousness and in faith. Hallelujah. Right. Trusting in the Lord and looking to the Lord. Hallelujah. To follow as it says in 2 Timothy. We're going to follow in righteousness, faith and charity and peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. See, that's the main thing we've got to do. We can't just do it, you know, to be seen. Or, you know, for others just to say, well, look at her or look at him. No, we're doing this as unto the Lord. And also to see souls saved. That's the very most important thing that we can't lose sight of here tonight. You got to remember what Christ has done for you and how he has delivered you from sin. Aren't you thankful? Hallelujah. That he got a hold of your heart and it saved you. 
So that should make us whole the more that we don't want to see anyone lost. We don't want to see anyone be left out into this world of sin. No, we want them to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want to sow in righteousness. Hallelujah. I want to have those blessings. Praise the Lord. As it says in verse 19, as righteousness attendeth to life. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful as Jesus. And I always used to say this was my scripture, my testimony, because the devil tried to take my life. In John 10.10, 10, it says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Thank God for that life eternal. Hallelujah. Thank God for the promise and the hope that we can lay our head down on the pillow tonight uh, and we can have peace of mind knowing, hallelujah, that we have life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Proverbs 12, 28 says, In the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death. Hallelujah. That's the most important thing that we've got to remember. That this soul, the yes, as I shared yesterday, this body decays away. This body becomes nothing. But I want you to know your soul, hallelujah, is going to go on for eternity. And where you wanted to be found, you wanted to be found in Christ Jesus, your Lord. Amen. You want to be found in Him. John got it right when he said, In him was life, uh, and the life was the light of men. Hallelujah. Without that light shining in our hearts, hallelujah, we wouldn't have no life. Uh, we wouldn't have no joy. Uh, we wouldn't have no peace, praise God. And we definitely wouldn't have no salvation. But praise be to Jesus Christ. Uh, he shined his light into my heart and into my mind and into my soul and now I can let His light shine so others may see and receive of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that be believeth, he that liveth and believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Hallelujah. I have a home being prepared for me. You have a home being prepared for you, praise God. This world is not my home, praise the Lord. This isn't, uh, I'm going to have a glorified body, praise the Lord. You're going to have a glorified body, praise the Lord. The old is passed away, the old he makes it all new. Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 12, he says, He that hath the Son hath life. This is plain and simple. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. There's a lot of people that think that they can get to heaven or that they can get life, eternal life through some other kind of religion or some other way. I want you to know, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We must go unto Jesus. He is the only one that can deliver us and to help us, praise the Lord. And when we sow unto righteousness, when we give our all to the things of God, hallelujah, we're going to be blessed and we're going to have life and we're going to have those blessings following us from day to day. Yes. 
I truly believe, you know, yes, there are times when God reveals how He keeps us or what He delivers us from. Praise God for those times. But I want you to know there's a lot that we don't even know about that He keeps us uh, and He protects us. And I, I said over this whole thing that was going, I am thankful that God has been with us. And I say, Lord, all the more keep us uh, in Your hand uh, and help Help us, Lord, to walk this thing out uh, and to pursue righteousness uh, and let the peace of God reign in our hearts every day. Amen. That's what we need. And then those blessings and those, those rewards will come our way. We know, and that's the main thing that we've got to keep in mind, when we sow to the flesh, of the flesh will reap corruption. But of the Spirit, we will reap life eternal. Hallelujah. We've got to walk into the righteousness and the power of the Holy Spirit because those that pursue evil, that says that pursueth it to its own death, to their own death. Amen. We can see in the world today that there are those that are falling in the way of the evil one. They're being deceived as I talked about that deceitful work. And I want you to know, don't let it come your way. And when it does, keep sowing those seeds of righteousness. Keep sowing and walking in the way of the Lord because I want you to know you have the power through God. Hallelujah to break down every force of the devil and every evil that may come our way. There's one thing we've got to do. We've got to know, we've got to know that there's nothing good that's going to come out to sowing to the flesh. Living our life, a, a, a life of evil, a life of sin. Talks about that in Jude. I want to read there in Jude. It says, verse 7, says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. And there's the example. And this is in Jude. Jude talked about what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. What they did, it was full of wickedness. It, it was full of sin. It talked about fornication. It talked about turning over to strange flesh. I want you to know, uh, God made Adam and Eve. Uh, he made us uh, that it was a man and it was a woman. Hallelujah. We're not to go in that wrong direction, uh, but we are to follow in the ways of righteousness because we can see what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. It says they were set forth as an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's why it's so important that we, we see ourselves daily in our lives and say, Lord, you know, I don't want anything to come into my heart or in my mind that would deceive me. I want you to know the church, little by little, churches that are being deceived and they're being brought in thinking that the things, that some, some of these sins are okay and that you can be a child of God and walk in these things. I say, God help me that I will hold on to the truth of this gospel. That I'll never let it go. And even though there may be persecution, because I want you to know more and more, when we turn away from the truth and we turn away from righteousness, uh, we won't see the same way. That's why it's so important that we find ourselves here in the house of God. Because we're hearing the Word of God. And when we hear the Word of God, what does it produce? It produces faith in our hearts. 
It helps us uh, that we'll keep on striving and working for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we've got to be careful that we examine ourselves and say, Lord, I don't want anything to come up into my life or in my heart uh, that will take Your Word away from me. Titus talked about that. Read in Titus chapter 1. It says, Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. See, that's why we don't want there to be doubt and we don't want there to be unbelief. We want to have faith. Hallelujah. We don't want the deceitful one to come in and steal away the good Word of God from our lives. It says, and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and their conscience is defiled. See, that's why we want to examine ourselves. It says, and they profess that they know God. But in works, they deny Him being abominable and disobedient and, under, and unto every good work reprobate. Dear Lord Jesus, help us. That's why when we hear the Word of God, we are allow it to do the perfect work that it wants to do. We don't harden ourselves to the Word of God, but we say, Lord, soften my heart to God, to Your Word. Don't ever let me turn a deaf ear. Don't ever let me turn away from Your Word. But Lord, help me to walk into the ways of righteousness because I want those blessings. I want those rewards. Hallelujah. When He will say, well done, Thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Come in to the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to hear those words. God. Little Noah that was here yesterday, you know, I, he was in my preschool class when he was three. And, you know, they, they grow up so fast, but I was kind of picking on him because he'd said one time, you know, he was trying to get away from his dad. And he said, well, I'll come and live with you. So I said, are you ready? You got your bags packed? You coming with me? And then, you know, he wanted to go home with his mom and dad. But I, he said, well, he goes, well, he goes, I'll come to church if you, if you get me the lunch. He said it somehow like that. He goes, if you have me lunch afterward, I'll come to church. We all like a reward, don't we, when we do something. Amen. <laughs> it's an example, though, that God is a loving Father. And He, hallelujah, has good things in store for us. Hallelujah. He's not going to leave us empty-handed. No, He's going to give us those abundant blessings. Uh, he's going to let the blessings and the life come down upon us. Uh, he's going to help us in our time of trouble. Uh, he's going to deliver us and uh, heal our sick bodies. I want you to know whatever your need is, uh, give it to God. Hallelujah. Put your trust in the Lord and know Oh, hallelujah. He will give you the victory and He will help you to walk this thing out. Hallelujah. And trust in Him every day. Praise the Lord. And He will see you through. Can you say amen? Yeah. Amen. to their